Rock from Palo Alto, home of the defending national champion, Stanford Cardinal. Welcome to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. We're ready to rock from Palo Alto, home of the defending national champion, Stanford Cardinal, who haven't missed a beat. Winners of 21 straight, and tonight they take on a very motivated 8C Kansas Jayhawks team, and we'll find out soon which one will keep their dancing shoes on to the Sweet 16. As we welcome you inside the Maples Pavilion, along with Steffi Sorensen, I'm Tiffany Green. And first, we have to thank the Leland Stanford University Marching Band for providing that soundtrack when we came on air. And when you talk about the Stanford team, Hall of Fame coach Tara Vanderveer likens her group to yes. an orchestra, or like the band behind us. Why? Because you have to have each instrument, each player, working together in unison to create one sound. Well, Tara Vanderveer is the conductor of this band, and she's got a really good one, and it starts with the percussions. Woo, let's strike up that the band. The defense of this Stanford team. You hear that drum? That's Cameron Brink, big and bold. And the cymbal, that's next. Anna Wilson, she's the disruptor. But as the music starts to flow, tip, you get the woodwinds involved. Oh, that's yeah. the saxophone. That's Haley Jones, your Pac-12 player of the year. So pretty on the court. Her game is smooth. And you have to think about the whole twins. You hear that brass as well. That anchors the band. Yeah, the whole sisters, they want to have a word with this band because nothing keeps this team going like them. They play so hard on every single play. They have the right tune for this Stanford band. And Tara Vanderveer, the Hall of Fame coach in her 36th season at the helm, trying to lead her team once more to the Sweet 16 for the 14th consecutive season. On the other side, there's Diana Twin Jackson, fourth in the nation in blocks per game, named the all-defensive team out of the Big 12. These were her numbers against Georgia Tech in that first round game, 14 points, seven boards, and a couple of denials. Ready to get it going. And it's Kansas winning the tip, coming in at 21 and nine on the season out of the Big 12. What a great turnaround story for this Jayhawks team. They maintain possession after moving past the first round, winning 77 to 58 over the nine seed Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. So Holly Kurzgeter leading the way for this Jayhawks team, but Julie Brasso immediately blocked by Cameron Brink, still maintaining possession. Jayhawks find Franklin, and Zakaya Franklin is off the mark. I see there by Lexi Hall as we take a look at tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Capital One. We introduce you to the starting five in our open for this reigning national champion team. And A look back the other way for the Kansas Jayhawks. Kurzgeter, Twin Jackson, Franklin, Brasso, and Ioana Hatzelionzi. Well, Kansas has to be careful with his quick shots, but being patient within their offense is going to be a turnover for the Jayhawks to start this. And it is home crowd for Stanford. And the conductor really getting after her team yesterday in practice, being focused, being locked in, especially on the defensive side of the floor. And when you look at this Stanford group, and you see the accomplishments, obviously, of Tara Vanderveer, who's the all-time winningest coach in women's basketball history. She is a regular in the NCAA tournament, has done a great job with this team, and she has superstars just like that with Haley Jones. Hitting them with the sacks early on in this game, Tiff. I you know I'm not a band director, but we made, we created the band. We channel a little pity energy. <laughs> I like that making of the band as the answer back the other way with Zakaya Franklin getting the Jayhawks on the board. Cameron Brink right there 
and the rejection from Twin Jackson. That's got to give Jackson a lot of uh, confidence, Tiffany, going up against Cameron Brink. She's got a 6'8 wingspan, but Twin Jackson's 6'6. Coming back the other way, and Haley Jones has a little block in her as well. Talked about how for this Stanford team, it starts with defense, but when you watch them on the offensive end, so very fluid. Franklin pacing back the other way, the junior out of Lakeland, Florida, who had eight points in the last game. Hatsa Leonti, one of the few and double figures for the Jayhawks as Curtis Geeter gets on the board. Holly Curtis Geeter, first team, all Big 12 selection, and as we mentioned already, She's led the season in scoring for the Jayhawks. Great possession for Kansas defensively. They're going to try and protect the paint in this game. They're going to force Stanford to make 12 to 15 threes. Coach Brandon Schneider was really grilling them today at, or yesterday at practice. Protect the paint, force long twos, threes, make them, make them hit them. Ball bouncing around, and jump ball, possession arrow, goes with the Cardinal. I mentioned this fun matchup between Brink and Jackson, and Jackson's got the height, 6'6". Six, six. Great rotation, but also Haley Jones would like to have a word because she's starting this game off really well. They didn't really need her scoring in, in the first round, but her intensity to start this game is next level. Prater on the floor for the Jayhawks. A good defender off the bench also gave them a nice boost. She is guarding Hull. Brink for three. Yes! Cameron Brink. That's the Campbell tip. <laughs> Talking to Coach Snyder about that. He said, you got to pick your poison with Stanford. They'll hurt, hurt you in the paint, in the pick and roll, off their pinch offense. When Kamer brings hitting threes, Stanford, <laughs> tough to defend. Hatsa Leonti, a little throwback power forward for Coach Brandon, as he likes to be called. But let's go back to that triple from Cameron Brink. Well, where is Jackson most comfortable with? She's comfortable in the paint, but this play, Cameron Brink recognizes the help. She steps out. She can hit this three. I mean, we talked to her yesterday, Tiffany, where she feels like she's really grown in her game is, is her shooting. She spent a lot of time in the offseason really working on that three-point shot. Her ninth three of the game, and when you think about the stars for this Stanford team and Haley Jones and, and Cameron Brink, they are hungry to try to defend their national championship title. And then they run into a Kansas team here today who's trying to get back to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2013. Brink losing the handle there. And the Cardinal turn it over. Yes, everyone knows about Stanford coming into this ball game, but when you think about what Coach Brandon has done with this Kansas team in terms of the improvement in wins from last season to now, plus 13 in that category, an amazing turnaround, and it's been because of players like Holly Kurzgeeter who have stepped up to the challenge and said, I want the mantle of helping to carry this team. Yeah, no, no doubt that they felt disrespected this season. And somebody like Hurley, Holly Kurskeeter, who's been on this team for several years, no one's ever talked about Kansas. And now they're talking about them. They're here in the second round. They're here to compete with Stanford. And it takes that belief, and that's something that We've seen in the first round, we're seeing it so far in this first quarter. It, it starts with belief, especially when you're on the road. You gotta believe you're gonna win. It moved to plus 14 with that win yesterday in terms of that turnaround as Papa Dupulu couldn't stop Cameron Brink. 10-8 ball game with just over five minutes to go in the opening quarter from Palo Alto. Tiffany, remember I talked about quick shots being turnovers. Kansas has to be so mindful of that. Look how quickly Stanford gets out. And you see the mindset is fine, 22 in white. That's Cameron Brink. So she'll go to the free throw line when we come back here to Maples Pavilion.
Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Oh, walk down memory lane when the Stanford Cardinal got their first championship in 90 and then in 92 racked up another as they defeated the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky and who can forget last year's national championship now a trio of crowns for the Queens as they defeated Arizona by one point but when you have that conductor like you talked about with Tar Vanderveer, who is uh, so well accomplished, how she's able to take the stars, have them find ways to play together in a system as a unit. That's not an easy task for a coach. And talking to Haley Jones about that national championship that they got last year, she said, we put in so much work. I mean, you think about living away from campus for weeks on in the, the dark days and hotels and isolation she felt like if they didn't it was wouldn't have been worth it i mean they they put so much effort into that national championship that this season is just so much more joyful and obviously when you are reigning as the champion i don't know if everyone expects you to repeat but this group may have shocked some by going undefeated in conference play in the Pac-12, which is not an easy task. And Franklin left it short, but Jackson trying to get that board and a jump ball. You know what I've been really impressed with with Kansas? 10 to 12, first quarter, but they've protected the paint. I mean, yesterday's, or the first round game, Stanford just torched Montana State in the paint. Remember, we saw them cut and move and whatever. It's been difficult to start this game for Stanford to get those wide open layups. Well, how about Cameron Brink? We talked about the block party in terms of her defense. And Brink with her first denial of the game. But you also mentioned, you know, the disrespect that this Kansas team felt going into the season, right? Picked last in the Big 12, 10. And what did Coach Brandon do? He fired what up he his do? team. Oh, yeah, he printed those poles all over the place, put tins all around the facilities, and then he said, let's burn those things. Let's burn them and show why we demand respect. And they've done that this season. Here's Chandler Prater going through a little bit of traffic, trying to go for her own board. And last touch by Stanford. Yeah, Prater's going to look for her shot when she comes into the game. She's got a good, strong, athletic build. Kansas is an opportunistic, pushing tempo kind of team. They'll, they'll find opportunities when they feel like they've got an advantage in transition, but not, not, not necessarily trying to keep pace with Stanford. Kurzgeter, tough shot there. She's fouled on the shot and will have to. Second personal, number three, Anna Wilson, 13 foul. So whistle called against Anna Wilson. That's her second personal foul. As an ovation for Fran Belibi as she checks in. And obviously she got plenty of house Friday with that <laughs> Fran <same> slam. <laughs> we were well entertained. Will the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship is leading all the way up to where? Minneapolis, that's the destination. You can find those games across our ESPN family of networks from the Sweet 16, and we'll take you all the way to the championship game, which culminates on April 3rd. Well, Belibi hands it over to Hull, and Lexi Hull drains it at 13 points yesterday. She and Haley Jones played the most minutes on the court, but man, how cool of a story has she's been as, you know, she's that player who is just a glue piece for the Stanford team. Getting after it defensively, and then bodies hit the floor, Hull and Franklin. Gonna get Holly Kerskeeter with the foul. How about the hustle by Lexi Hall, one of the most underrated players in the country. She makes Stanford go. She leads them in steals. She doesn't give up on the play. She doesn't bend down. She dives to the floor to get this loose rebound. 
Loose play. Keeps the possession alive for the Cardinal. But that's the dirty work that she does. But she makes it look so good. Yes, she does. <laughs> and did you hear the crowd respond to that hustle play? You know, for these players, this is the first time they're playing in front of fans. 2020, COVID canceled the season. Fran Bolivi said, I felt the energy because this was missing last year. Kansas only trailing by six here in the opening period. Tough shot for Kurzgeter. Falls in the hands of Anaya Thomas, the senior out of Duncanville, Texas. And she tosses it down to twin Jackson. That's the patience I'm talking about. Three, four seconds left in the shot clock. Kansas really worked the ball around, but they got their high percentage look with Tiana Jackson. Four points, four boards on the day. Fran Belibi is just instant offense when she comes into the game. Such a great player about finding her own opportunities, Tiff. It's not like Tara Vanderveer is running a lot of plays for her. She goes out and gets them. And Kansas answering on the other end with the easy two from Jackson. Hannah Jump picking up where she left off from Friday. She knocked down five threes in that win over Montana State. And the answer back the other way by Hatsileonti. Well, Ioana Hatsileonti, who comes out of Greece, had a double-double Friday with 15 points and 10 boards. And now Prater coming from behind, trying to steal it. And a foul whistled against Haley Jones. So Kansas clearly knows with Anna Wilson going to the bench, Haley Jones running the point guard position a little bit, really attacking her, trying to force some turnovers for Stanford, their second. Five-point ball game. Kansas shooting 38% from the floor. Prater got caught in some traffic. Who's on the ground, Tiff? <laughs> Lexi Hall. Lexi Hull just doesn't stop on a play, Tiffany. That, that's what I really like about her game is any kind of <laughs> stoppage, she goes right towards the ball. She doesn't, she never lets up. And a jump again, that's her specialty. Jones tried to come away with it. Franklin scoops it up. And Hatsuleyonti. And let me post up instead, Franklin fires. The grad transfer, Jordan Hamilton, handling the rock in the game as Hall with the take to the bucket. And a tough shot as a few blue jerseys were around. And Coach Brandon on that take up the floor saying, hey, let's settle, let's slow and let's work for a good opportunity here towards the end of this first quarter. Franklin off the mark. Thomas is right there, the old board. They get one more shot. Hatsileoni. Hatsileoni was hot from the corner. And that triple to end the first quarter. And folks, a good ball game from Palo Alto. Oh, Kansas giving Stanford everything they've got. Hatsileonti in the corner. Bury it. 20 points for the Cardinal in the first quarter, but 12 of those came from the three-point line. Four different Stanford players hit threes in the first quarter. First, it was Anna Wilson, then Cameron Brink, the 6'4", post player stepping out, Lexi Hull. She can knock it down as well, and Hannah Jump. Five in the first round game, she gets in, buries it too. So Stanford, hot from the three-point line, but something that helped Kansas there to finish out that first quarter was Anna Wilson, primary ball, primary ball handler for Tara Vanderveer, picked up two fouls. Kansas was able to go on a run. 
not only that, but her defensive energy that she provides as well. Hatsaleonti, though, had a great close to the quarter for this Kansas group. Scored five of her seven points to close out the opening frame. What, what makes so teams just kind of go crazy a little bit is the fact that Stanford has so much depth. So next player up off in time. Number of McDonald's All-Americans even coming off the bench as Lacey Hole, the twin sister of Lexi handling the rock. Remember, Kiana Williams was the point guard last year, but Hall stepped into that. Kansas trying to play out the passing lanes. The Jayhawks lead the Big 12 in field goal percentage defense. I mean, they got the right one. call. I mean, I think Stanford touched it last. An opera, a huge opportunity here for Kansas. Possessions are so big. I mean, this is the second round, as Tara Vanderveer said, to, coming into this game. Only 32 teams got to practice. And so they whistle Stanford for the foul. That goes against Lacey Hall. But did you see the position of Jackson in the post? Well, Jackson trying to establish herself. Again, six foot six. She is working for that position. She can be such a, a, a dangerous offensive weapon for Kansas when they get the ball inside to her. Thomas left alone, and they'll let her take that shot as she airmails it out of bounds. Here's the better opportunity. You take one dribble, you give it to Jackson, you slide over, you move without the basketball, you get it right back, you'll get a better look. The Stanford group bringing in that 41-point win was the largest in tournament history against Montana State. As Haley Jones with the bucket. She's got four points now. Hatsaleonti pestered by Belibi, and Belibi comes down with the board. And another turnover for Stanford. Well, taking a look at the Spokane region, we already have two teams set with Maryland and Texas. Stanford or Kansas trying to face off against them in the round of 16. Of course, LSU. And that that was a thriller. Big <laughs> thriller surviving against Jackson State. They'll take on Ohio State tomorrow. We had me and you in the. Stanford players walked, gathered around a laptop. Oh, yeah. Uh, they were all in. They were also trying to clue in on how their fellow Pac-12 teams were doing. And it didn't necessarily fare so well as you saw Texas on that bracket took down the Utes of Utah. I think Texas is really peaking at the right time. Vic Schaefer's got them rolling. Arizona is still standing as Hall is fouled. One way to really alleviate the pressure for Stanford as jump just gets lost defensively is to just cut back door. It's very similar to what they do offensively. On the steal, here's Prater trying to save it. And there's a 6'6", Tiana Jackson, who stretches up tall. They need to get her involved, to your point. She's got four points, four rebounds. They've got to find her closer to the basket, the cut from Kurzgeter. Time winding down on the shot clock. Prater has it, got to get it up. And the shot clock violation. 
So Stanford remaining disciplined on defense and taking away good looks for Kansas. Yeah, just good team defense. I mean, really staying tight to their personnel. Ashton Prechtel. Out on the wing. Everybody can launch it from deep. Belibi. Tough pass handled by Hull. What a wow. move by Lexi Hull. <laughs> the Pac-12 Scholar of the Year. You saw a little brains used right there. She is all over Holly Kirk's here too, not really even giving her an opportunity at the basket. And Prechtel bringing down the board. Haley Jones, as you mentioned, her Callie Cool bringing it up the court. Last year's most outstanding player of the Final Four in the corner is Hull. Bouncing around and into the hands of the Jayhawks. Yeah, good block out totally from the interior presence of Kansas to just secure that defensive rebound. Think about some of the height on the floor. Fran Belivi, 6'1", 6'2", Prechtel, 6'4", Haley Jones, 6'2". Stanford located on the farm, and they've got plenty of trees. I see you, too. Uh-huh. <laughs> Jones just trying to avoid the defenders, goes to the floor hard, and she's helped up by her teammates. You know, Stanford's offense just looks so different with Haley Jones running the point guard because when she's able to play at the elbow, she can do so many things as a decision maker. As we see here, Stanford getting out in transition, setting up the opportunity for Haley Jones to get herself to the free throw line. And Haley Jones, the All-American, and as you mentioned, the Pac-12 Player of the Year, just so versatile. And even though she is a superstar, she is the most humble superstar that she will come across because she doesn't mind doing whatever is needed for this team. It's not like I have to get the ball and I have to yeah. score all the time or I need all the attention. And that's what's so unique or special about this Stanford team because nobody really demands that, but they know when to take over when necessary. Timeout taken on the floor. We'll step aside as well. 4.55 remaining in the first half. Uh, thanks so much. The wonderful women holding it down. They are. Chelsea, Andrea, Shout and out. Monica. And nice colors today in studio. Always. See what the colors here. They Always. Got the colors in studio. Always. Got it. Look good, play good, announce good. I'll tell you, an area where we've seen Kansas shine in moments is being able to force some steals and turnovers, and there, Anaya Thomas able to go coast to coast. There it is. There's that backdoor cut that they were mentioning just a moment ago in studio. It's 27-22. Stanford has yet to trail in this regional. Well, Kansas is, is, is out rebounding Stanford, which is impressive considering the fact that they're really not the same height, athleticism at each spot. But Ioana Hatzleonti, I mean, she's got athleticism herself, really crafty around the rim. This is that matchup I like. Oh, Brink. Little smile afterwards. Cameron Brink, third team All-American, has some admirers in the stands. Of course, her mother, Michelle, played at Virginia Tech along with Father Greg. So they're in the stands. Again, I feel like there is just a different level of energy brought into this game as opposed to Friday's game of just how happy they are to be back and watching their team and postseason play.
Haley Jones facilitating the offense, and what a better player to give it to than Cameron Brink, using that 6-4 frame and skill around the rim. And there's mom to the left, as we, we got mentioned, there? Michelle Bain Brink. And, oh, wait a minute, and dad, hey, hey, Greg. But in the middle, we've got Steph Curry's kids in the building. That's Riley and Ryan. Of course, they have a very good relationship because Cameron's mom played with Steph Curry's mom at Virginia Tech. Thomas left alone, and the free throw line jumper just extended there. And this Kansas team shooting 38%, yeah, finding by three. ways to just stay in this game. And blocked again by Jackson, a little chatter afterward. A nice play up ahead, the bounce pass. Run this thing back, Kansas on defense. Jackson, one of the best in the country at block shots, going right at Cameron Brink. Not today, but they don't stop there. They push in transition. Holly Kerskeeter finishes with the foul. Get to the free throw line. One thing that Kansas does so good. Top 20 in the country at free throws. Well, Kerskeeter will go to the free throw line and try to complete the three-point play as Haley Jones picks up her second personal foul. So she, along with Lacey Hull and Anna Wilson, all with two personal fouls. That one bounces off the back iron. And credit this Kansas team who has come in eager, ready to play, trying to take their program back to the Sweet 16 for the first time in nine years as Lexi Hole, Lexi Hole sees that one roll around. The handoff. Hi, right, Coach Brandon wanted a call there. Thomas thought about it, takes a dribble, contested shot, off the mark. Take the first one, Thomas. She was ready, don't hesitate. Fourth team picked up, fourth team foul picked up by Kansas, second for Anaya Thomas. Brandon Snyder right now just pleading with the refer, I think she's heard enough, but trying to go to bat for his players, it feels like Lexi Hull maybe a little too aggressive on the ball. That's what she does, but I understand his point. And you see this Kansas team and how poised they are against the national champs, the number one seed in the Spokane region. Hey, look, they played a tough schedule to close out the regular season. And if they can continue to capitalize on miscues from Stanford, they can draw within one or perhaps tie. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, Stanford a little bit flustered, but the big reason why has been Anna Wilson going to the pinch, right. bench when she picked up the two fouls. I mean, she's got, you talked about the six-year senior, the experience of running the offense, just settling the team down, the, the defensive energy that she brings. Stanford still has a lead, but the offense hasn't looked as fluid, which is, you know, what Stanford is known for, the rhythm offensively. Brasso, quick release. Yes, we're tied at 31 all. The Cardinal faithful cheering again, but how about the group from Lawrence, Kansas, coming in in a dog fight here. Look at the defense. Kansas just battling with Stanford. Julie 
Brosseau drilling the three, a much needed three to open up the perimeter, the paint for Kansas. But Lexi Hall, how consistent has she been this first half? Wow. When they needed an answer, she has delivered. And she's hopeful that she can get back home to Spokane where she and her twin sister are from originally. That's where the regional round will take place. And the turnover once more from Stanford. And Kansas can hold for the last shot after the Cardinal commit their 10th turnover of this first half. Zakaya Franklin has that one partially blocked by Haley Jones. Jones recognizing the time just off the mark. Woo, catch your breath, entertaining first half from Maples Pavilion as the eight seed Kansas Jayhawks giving the top seeded Cardinal everything that they can handle. Leonti with nine points. Lexi Hall leading with 11 for Stanford. Let's get you over to the studio with Kelsey, Monica, and Andrea for the halftime report. presented by Capital One. Two-point ball game at the half as the 8 seed Jayhawks trying to pull off a little upset city here on the campus of Stanford University with Steffi Sorensen. I'm Tiffany Green, and we talked about the orchestra or the band that brings the Stanford group together. Anna Wilson, yeah, with a couple of fouls, they turned the ball over 10 times when she went to the bench. Yeah. It I didn't foresee that coming. I mean, Stanford is such a well-oiled machine. They usually don't miss a beat because they've got a ton of depth, but Anna Wilson picking up those two fouls. Kansas really attacked Stanford, and I think the battle on the glass was big. Stanford uh, out-rebounded them just by one, but for Kansas to shoot 40% in that first half, really slow start for them a little bit, but made up for it to, to close out that second quarter. But turnovers really plagued Stanford. Anna Wilson back in the game. Let's see how their offense looks. As you check out our game track brought to you by Adidas and tie ball game once more as Zakaya Franklin hits the mid-range jumper. So it'll be really interesting to monitor foul trouble moving forward. A number of players with two. Cameron Brink with three. Holly Kurzgeeter for Kansas with a trio as well. Hull in the corner, off the mark. Kurzgeeter wrestling for the ball with Sister Lexi. Those two <laughs> have been going at it the entire game. So much respect for both of them. So hardworking, never giving up on plays. Kurzgeeter, Lexi Hull again on the ground, fighting for every possession for their team. How many times have we seen Lexi Hull at least hit the 10. hardwood? At least 10. Today, tonight. She's on the inbound pass. And Lacey lifts this one. They have four triples in the first quarter. First half, rather. That one from deep. Stanford team averaging seven made threes a game and watch out if they get going from long distance. So just to recap that first half, Stanford hits four threes in the first quarter. Four, first quarter, second quarter, no threes. So the game plan coming in for Kansas was to make Stanford hit a bunch of threes. They're gonna, Kansas is gonna protect the paint. Franklin crossover and pushes it off the glass. Stanford basketball. Well, again, this Kansas team coming in after feeling offended in the Big 12. And they've proven everybody wrong with a breakthrough season. 
And the make on the other end for Stanford's hole. Hole leading the way with 13 points for the Cardinal. Getting her hand on that one. Tough. But Zakaya Franklin making that tough shot, as you mentioned. Mm. And she's a player who was slow to get going in that game. They like her production here. That backdoor cut again and run to perfection. Great execution on the assist was Jones. That's why I talked about picking your poison with Stanford. You dare them to shoot the three, they make the three. You try to protect the paint, they're cutting, they're back cutting, screens. That's how difficult it is to, to guard Stanford. Every player on the court is a threat for them offensively. And what did you say Coach Brandon says, look, we can't guard everything, but we can't be scared either as Brasso knocking down the long distance shot. Hall trying to answer back the other way. Wilson running to that rebound. The old board keeps it with Stanford. And Alexi Hall answers on the other end. Lexi Hall, who has had been an outstanding game so far with 18 points. And Twin Jackson right there as Twin Jackson They'll need her offensive presence more in this second half. And the challenge there from Brink, and Cameron Brink wins that one over the 6'6 Jackson. Seeing the best of the best right now, Tiffany. I mean, players just making plays. These are tough twos, tough threes by both teams right now. Hatsaleonzi high kiss off the glass. She paced the way for the Jayhawks in the first half with nine. She now has 11. The foul by Jackson with a little extra nastiness to us. Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. Well, the nastiness has got to stay intact because she is important to this Kansas Jayhawks team. Offensively and defensively, she's she's got a tough matchup against Cameron Brink because Brink, she's she has a lot of feminine energy right off the court. She loves that. She got that from her mama, but on the court, she uh, she she is a different beast, right? <laughs> she's gonna try and agitate Jackson and draw fouls. And that one blocked by Hatzelionzi. On the break, Franklin swings it over to Prater. The pull up, Jay. And that quick shot in that possession with the momentum that you had coming from the defensive side. And Jones somehow got her own rebound. Brink finds the stabilizer in Wilson. Hole going behind that screen and got it again. Lexi Hall now with three from downtown. And Prater with nowhere to go. We talk about Stanford making seven threes a game, and here was number seven. They practice their offense. 5-0 on yesterday for 25 minutes. They got exactly what they wanted on that possession. You, you sink underneath the screen against Lexi Hull, that's a no-no. She's, she's got the hot hand. You got to know that if you're Kansas. The difficulty in guarding Hull is that she can shoot the three, but she's also so good at curling around screens. So if you push her off the screen, she's got the capability to get to the rim. Right now, she is just showing out, got a hand on that one. And it's the whole sisters leading this break. And the foul as Lexi will shoot a couple. Lexi Hall has just been absolutely everywhere. Reads the defense, understands the play, but it's all about sprinting the floor. Sister gives it to her, she gets to the free throw line. Lexi Hall scored 10 of Stanford's last 12 points. You know, we're talking numbers. 
Lexi Hall, the Pac-12 Scholar Athlete of the Year, Management, Science, and Engineering major. So getting her undergrad and grad degree in four years, along with her sister, Lacey, like 3.9, 3.8 GPAs for the twins. I just want like one tenth of their smarts and brains and balance. I'm hoping by being here, just it'll run <laughs> off osmosis. on me. Through osmosis, yes. <laughs> As they finished up finals week here at Stanford, Franklin had a good look at three, but Jones also was standing nearby. Top of the Pulu inside the Hatsuleonti, and there is. Lexi Hall once again. She's everywhere on the court as Holly Kurzgeter comes to the scorer's table to try to lift this Kansas team, but they need to come up with a stop here. Yeah, they're in a dangerous spot right now. Stanford clearly on the run. A big charge. What a start to the third quarter for Stanford. But Kansas fighting back. This one's going to be a good one. In March, expect the unexpected. Let's check out our thrilling drives from tonight's game. Brought to you by Nissan. And Lexi Hall has been on a tear in this game. You mentioned Nissan, let's talk engines. She's got a V8, maybe a V10. It takes a lot of gas to fill this tank, but she comes ready and her engines always filled up. She takes a ton of hits, but she gets up. She makes every play for her team, offensively, defensively. Tiffany couldn't ask for more from Lexi Hall. And with those $6 plus gas prices out here in California, it takes a lot to fill up that tank, but man, it seems like she never runs out of fuel on the court. So big basket out of the break for Kansas to cut the lead to six, and then Hannah Jump extends the lead for Stanford with that one from long range. Anaya Thomas, foot on the line, long two. Brink coming down with the rebound. Stanford, who hasn't lost in the first two rounds since 2007, trying to keep their streak alive of going to the Sweet 16. But as we've already seen today on the men's and women's sides, the 10 seeds have something going, right? The 10 seed. Creighton Blue Jays with their big win and upset over Iowa. How about the Coyotes taking down Baylor? What a win for her. Don Plitzewite. I mean, the Coyotes put some respect on their name. Headed to the Sweet 16. They got three super seniors. Hannah Shervin is a player that, if you're watching at home, she is a must-watch player with Chloe Lamb. Coyotes, one of the best defenses in the country. And how about their second ever NCAA tourney win? And they're headed to the Sweet 16 for the first time. Hole short, pops into the hands of Jackson. Kurzgeter finds Franklin running on the left side. And an offensive foul called against Zakiah Franklin. And first personal team's fourth. Well, it's not Lacey Hall, it's Lexi Hall who does a lot of plays like that, trying to take a charge. That was Lacey Hall. See, that's Lacey. what happens when you, when you see partner. the twins. <laughs> it looks so much alike. Thankfully, they're wearing different numbers to help distinguish the two. Although Lacey does boast being an inch taller. At one point or another. And what a basket by Fran Bolivi. Fran Bolivi 
just going to work, head down, tough to stop. Let me tell you something, when she scores, this place goes crazy. <laughs> uh, they went insane when she had that dunk Friday night against Montana State. And she was like, yeah, I thought it would be pretty dope to dunk in Maples <laughs> Pavilion for the first time as Kansas spins a timeout. The top seeded Stanford Cardinal out to their largest lead of the game. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? This is not gonna get old, folks. But this is gonna become more of the norm and the reaction from the get bench. Get the fan, just, get the fan. <laughs> just Bring her back to priceless. life. Bring her back to life. <laughs> as that dunk from Fran Belibi. Friday night, this place was insane. You know what's really special about that? Is she's only six foot one. Most dunkers we've seen are, are tall. Brittany Griner, six seven, six eight. Candace Parker, six four. Fran Bellini's only six one. Shorty out here making it look easy. <laughs> As Curtis Geeter brings her team within 10. If you're just tuning in, folks, the top seeded Cardinal had been pushed all game long. This Kansas team has come in. They were down by just two at the break. But how has Stanford stretched out this lead? Well, it's been a combination of Lexi Hall. Their defense has really come alive. I have a feeling Tara Vanderveer challenged them on the defensive side of the floor, get more stops. And I just think they'd settle down. They're finding the rhythm offensively. Kurzgieter wrestling down that rebound as she's fouled. They're getting the looks that they want to get. Lexi Hull, a big reason why. She does such a good job of just reading the defense. You stay tight to me, she's gonna curl. She's gonna find her mid-range jumper. You sag off, I'll shoot the three. Back cut, you name it, Stanford has all the skills. Kurzgieter goes to the floor hard, pops back up, and she's been so important to this team as Papa Dipulu tries to keep it alive and tips it out of bounds. It's time for Twin Jackson to really assert herself mm -hmm. offensively. She's, she's got to want it and call for it. Got to make them guard her down low. Hannah Jump, all she needs is just a second and a little bit of space. And a little bit of jump. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right, if Kansas is going to keep this game within reaches, they had done for the first two quarters. Twin Jackson has to emerge greater, really on both ends of the floor, because she is a big battery in this Jayhawk lineup. But now she has three personal fouls, so having to be mindful of that in the final minute of the third quarter. A player who just kind of played basketball because she was tall and then, you know, ended up le learning to love the game over time. Came over from Juco. And he found a home. But right now, her team in a deficit. Remember, Tiana Jackson had 14.7 rebounds and two blocks against a, a very physical, tough Georgia Tech team. What we saw from her in that second half was really wanting the basketball, and I think that that changed the, the dynamic of the offense for the Jayhawks. We well, haven't seen the same you know, aggressiveness from her. She's just mainly screening for the guards. her best season in a Stanford Cardinal uniform. Time winding down in this third quarter. Left hand and won't go for Franklin. So a huge third quarter for Stanford. 
as they outscore the Kansas Jayhawks 32 to 15 in that period coming out of the locker room. And Lexi Hall, a big part of that charge. Well, Stanford ran out of the locker room up by just two points, and they said, we needed a little bit more separation because this is too close for comfort, and they've been able to rely on a number of things. We've talked about how important the three ball is. They matched their total from Friday night. I think at the half, you know, these players, they have experience, and they know what it takes to win a national championship, right? So they're going to hold themselves to a certain level of accountability. So before Tara Vandiver probably even went into the locker room, <laughs> they were addressing all the things that they needed to do differently. And that's what really makes Stanford special is just the collective buy-in, one, but two, the accountability that all the players have, the unselfishness that they play with. Let's talk about the way they started practice yesterday. Oh, yeah. Defensive slides. That's right. I know Andrea Carter, she's in listening in the studio. She's loving this right now. <laughs> closing out footwork, chopping your feet, closing out. Mm -hmm partner passing ball handling. It was competitive ball handling. And then they worked on their offense five on zero, oh, defensive scouting for 30 minutes. I mean, stuff you don't see every day. I was going to say, we it's very have different. been to a number of practices, not only just this season, but over the years, as Lexi Hull is closing in on a season high of 33 points that she had back against Oregon earlier this season. She's got 28 right now. But back to your point. We don't see that very often. But we have seen this all day and all season for Stanford with the way they've moved the basketball. Yeah, I mean, they, they just practice this. They drill it. They run it 5-on-0. They know where to go. They make reads. That's the most important thing. When, you, when you're facing a team offensively that is uh, has a lot of chemistry and they can read each other, it's, it just gives you your defense a nightmare because how do you guard it? I got to I gotta respect Fran Belibi, but I can't leave Lexi Hall. Lacey Hall, I can't. They're going to hit the three. So that was obviously a concern for Brandon Schneider when we were talking to him about guarding Stanford. Whistle on the other end of the floor. That goes against Lacey Hall. And again, we saw them attack and hang right there with Kansas, excuse me, right there with Stanford in that first half. I mean, this ball game was 33-31 at the break. But one of the things that Kansas kind of got away from, we talked about it, where's Kersge to your leading scorer? Hatsileon, too, he had nine in the first half. She's been held to just two yes. in the second half. Well, Stanford so. just really clamping down defensively and utilizing this crowd. You know, the, the big threes, the easy twos gave them so much energy, and then they really utilized it on the defensive side of the floor. Hello, Lexi Hall. Oh, my goodness. Lexi Hall just can't seem to miss. Five from downtown. 31 points as each night a new soloist can take center stage in this symphony orchestra of Stanford. Watch the movement for Stanford. Patient, reading the screen, you fight underneath, I'm making you pay. Lexi Hall having herself a day, her sister. They, where do they want to get to? Spokane, go back home. Played their high school ball at Central Valley. Top recruits as Lexi was number 14, two-time Washington Gatorade Player of the Year. Talking about Player of the Year, here's the Pac-12 Player of the Year. Smooth, fluid moves from Haley Jones. And right now, nothing seeming to work for this Kansas Jayhawk team. 
Remember the last time they made it to the Sweet 16? It was back in 2013. A large deficit to overcome if they want a shot at doing it again as Cameron Brink is trying to ensure that her Stanford Cardinal advance to their 14th straight round of 16. Curse Geeter. Bounce pass over to Papa Dipulu. And deny Papa Dipulu is off the mark. Wilson has just been so steady for, for Stanford. She does, you know, the things that go unnoticed, whether it's just settling them into their offense, getting Lexi Holt into the right position, and then it frees up Haley Jones to run their offense through the high elbow. I mean, she does so many things from that position, whether it's screening, attacking, or passing. She leads Stanford in assists. So Anna Wilson getting the foul trouble did hurt Stanford, but now coming back in the four really changed the look of the Cardinal offensively. Entered this program in 2016, played the most career games for the Cardinal at 150. She's like a super, super senior. senior. Yes, she is. 24-year-old <laughs> out of Seattle, Washington, has to be pleased with the way her team is playing, especially Lexi Hall, who now ties her career high at 33. We talked at the top of the broadcast about all the different parts and pieces within this team and what we've seen from Lexi Hull and her performance here today. It's just on any given night or day, somebody on this Stanford roster can hurt you. Go for it, baby. Yeah. And that basket is able to drop in from Prater. Levy finding Wilson. Something tells me Wilson's caught a few balls from her brother Russell. <laughs> and she looked like a wide partner. receiver. <laughs> she gonna move over to Denver. As brother Russell Wilson in the stands. Just inked a new deal with the Broncos, so he'll be playing in the Mile High City. Come this fall. But when it's your night, it's your night, and it's been all Lexi Hall. Man, as Lexi Hall delivered tonight in Palo Alto, has this crowd up, standing, sister, loving it. 36 points, six threes, 12 rebounds. She's going for it again. Six rebounds, pardon me, partner. <laughs> The tough take, and then the foul. So Prater will go to the line after drawing the foul on Prechtel. Haley Jones gets a nice applause as she heads to the bench. We saw all 15 players for the Cardinal in the ball game. Friday. Well, the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship first round continues on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. For more information on tournament games and times and listings, of course, go to NCAA.com. Jay Wright, Villanova, back in the Sweet 16. How about Kansas, who beat Creighton yesterday, 79-72. They will advance to play Providence in Chicago Friday as 
A sizable lead for the Stanford Cardinal. Under five remaining from Maples. Come back with us for more. Let's take a look at Lexi Hole with Be Your Own Champion, brought to you by Champion. One of the most underrated players in the entire country. She does it all for the Stanford Cardinal. She can shoot the three. She can defend. She gets on the ground for loose balls. She can shoot the mid-range. There is nothing that Lexi Hole cannot do when she's on the, on the basketball floor, Tiffany. I know we got the Currys in the house, but brother Steph Curry, Right? Who does he play with? Clay Thompson. One of the best two-way players, that's Lexi Hall. She plays defense. She can do it all offensively as well. Outstanding year for the senior Lexi Hall, who's trying to push her team back toward Spokane and beyond as the road to Minneapolis has to go through Stanford. New faces in the ball game for the Cardinal. Hall still on the floor, but Alyssa Jerome, Prechtel, Kiki, Iriafin, and Anna Wilson. The five on the court. Great hustle there. A lot of bodies hitting the floor. Wilson thought about it, wrapped around, and is fouled. This is a deep Stanford team of the 17 players. 13 have USA basketball experience or international experience in some shape or form. Lexi Hall soak this all in. A career high night. And what helped push her team. Less than four minutes away from another trip to the Sweet 16. One possession game at the half. Yeah. You blink and it's a 30 point game. And that is just how good Stanford is. And Tiana Jackson getting on the board. And so does Agnes Imanopu, who checks in the ball game. You talked about that international experience. She's one of them, played basketball Australia. She was born in Nigeria and then moved to Aussie land. for this Kansas Jayhawk team, the eight seed coming in and feeling the love from the crowd here in Maples Pavilion. Two seniors on the roster for the Jayhawks. Playing in their final game. Off the mark there from Jenna Van Geitenbeek. And Franklin with the runner. We know this is not necessarily the way that Brandon Schneider would have liked for this game to go, but he has to be pleased with the first 20 minutes of this ball game. And then thinking back to some of the congratulatory texts that he received in making it to the second round. We've talked about the great turnaround of this Kansas team. and the breakthrough season that they've had. Said so Leonard Hargrove yeah. gave me the best text message after the game. He said, you know, a lot of people were saying congratulations and way to go. She said, hey, I like the way you represent the state of Kansas. Not the showing they would have 
terrific. wanted to have here tonight. But it's terrific to be one of the final 32 teams coming right. into today still standing. Well, they played one heck of a first half. And, you know, you have to give credit to Stanford and, the, and their dominance this year. I mean, they're a one seed for a reason. To keep up with them for full 40 minutes, not many teams have. And the freshman Kiki Iriathan with the bucket. They say she's an All-American in waiting. Again, that's what makes the Stanford team so dangerous is they have so much young talent. As Mia Vukcic, the sophomore out of Croatia, hoping to have a bright future with this Kansas club. Well, Kansas, no doubt, defied all expectations this year. Hung with the number one team for 20 minutes. Just couldn't keep pace. But you want to fight, and they never stopped fighting. Just too much Stanford in the end. Too much Lexi Hull. And Sana Strom is fouled. A large international presence on this Kansas team. As Lexi Hull has everything to smile about. 34 straight NCAA tournament appearances for this Stanford team. We talked about the natties that they've already racked up. But when you're talking about the Blue Bloods of college basketball, you think of Tennessee and UConn and Stanford. And no team has really won more games over the last two seasons than this Stanford club. And Tara Vanderveer has orchestrated this team to a 29 and three record this season. Those handful of losses coming at less than five points, or five points or less. And everybody's just getting into the action as Brooke Dimitri, one of those promising young faces in this program, keeps adding to this lead. And Vucic answering yeah, back the other way. Yeah, she's like, let me get mine right now. <laughs> What a brilliant second half from Stanford. And they will appreciate this time winding down, handshakes on the court. Kudos to this Kansas Jayhawk team, put up a great fight. And for two of the seniors, their last in this uniform, Julie Brasso. But all credit goes to the Stanford Cardinal as they are headed back to the Sweet 16 for the 14th consecutive season. You talked about a dominating performance in the second half. They put up 58 points over the final two quarters. And so the Cardinal will continue to march on to try to defend their national championship. They'll face off against the four seed Maryland Terrapins Friday in Spokane, Washington. Texas will await who they will face next Friday. Let's take a look at tonight's Capital One rewarding performance. And unless you've been living under a rock or not watching this game, Lexi Hall took over. Hall was on point. 36 points, six boards, three assists. The amount of times her body hit the floor today, she's gonna need a cold bath because she left it all out on the floor and a huge reason why the Cardinal are advancing tonight was Lexi Hall. Six of 11 shooting from three point range. 36 points for Lexi Hall to go along with those six rebounds and three assists. And she's kind enough to join us now. And Lexi, catch your breath on what has been an incredible night for you. How 
would you sum this up? I'm just happy to be going to Spokane. Um, that's what we wanted out of this game, and to have that tonight, couldn't be happier. Lexi, tell me what happened at the halftime. I mean, a totally different Stanford team, including your game um, in the second half. What was said by you or by Tar Tara Vandeveer? We just got together as a group, and, and we knew we had to come out playing better. Um, Tara kind of told us that might have been one of our worst halves, and we didn't like that. So we came out stronger, tougher, more competitive, and, and just gave it everything we had in that second half. What's it like for you in this arena? I mean, when you're on a roll and you've got your crowd, your sister cheering you on, your family, I mean, what is, what is it like playing in this moment? I think it was the loudest Maples have ever been. A um, lot of energy, a lot of support, super fun. Uh, my favorite game in Maples so far, and happy this is the last one. Okay, Lexi, I've just got to ask, you talked about wanting to get back home to Spokane. What's going to be that greeting like? Is the par are the parents going to have you guys over and, and really lay out the red carpet for you? Yeah, the family is getting everything ready. Um, hopefully we can have a little get together, but we'll see. It should be fun. I know a lot of people in Spokane are excited to have us coming home. Congratulations Thank on the you. win. Thanks. An outstanding night for the senior, Lexi Hole, dropping buckets left and right. Good feeling as the top seeded Cardinal are heading on to the Sweet 16. And Steffi, you know, obviously we have to look ahead. Right, so Stanford taking on Maryland yeah. next Friday. What do you think of that matchup? Well, I mean, two teams that really like to score. I think Maryland's playing really well right now. They looked good today and just their ability to put up big numbers. Um, but Stanford, the way that they can defensively really lock you down and score. You know, they're just so multi-dimensional, right? They, they can score in so many different ways, but their ability also, you know, with Cameron Brink being that anchor in the paint, makes them different, makes them dangerous. I mean, this team has experience of winning a national championship. They know what it takes. And there's a, one player right there, Lexi Hole, who's determined to get them all the way to Minneapolis. Well, she went off tonight. We talked about those 36 points. We'll see which Stanford steps up for their next solo in that Sweet 16 round, how special this is to, to do it in front of your home yeah. crowd. Well, we got to talk about last year, I mean, mentally and physically what it took out of the Stanford players. I mean, to be on the road and go through that much adversity and to win a national championship, you lose Keanu Williams, you find a way to gel at the right time, right? Lacey Hall, she comes into the starting lineup. She, she's got to run the point guard for Tara Vanderveer. They take some lumps but they really have not looked back since December when they lost to South Carolina. And they're red hot, they're rolling. Well, they ran into a Kansas team that came in very hungry. Yeah. And when you think about how Coach Brandon helped to fuel their fire at the beginning of the season, it really carried over throughout. Yeah, I was really impressed with Kansas. I mean, the way that they fought in that first half, I mean, they were right in it. And I think, you know, whatever happened at the halftime, we got to find out about because uh, something was said and it, and it worked. Uh, Stanford really showed out, but it, it just weighed on Kansas. I mean, I think there was just, you know, too much Stanford. And I think Kansas ran out a little bit of gas. And, you know, that's why they're the number one seed Tiff. All right, so one more look at the bracket in the Spokane region. The top seed, Stanford Cardinal, advancing on. They'll face the Terrapins Friday. LSU and Ohio State will get underway tomorrow night at 8 Eastern over on ESPN2. Texas will await the winner of that one. Woo! What a great game from Lexi Hull and this Stanford Cardinal. 91-65 for Steffi Sorensen. I'm Tiffany Green. Next up, Sports Center with Nicole Briscoe and Subin Mahinti.